Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are in the middle of an amazing series on rest in Christ. Last time we looked at uh, dysfunctional families. Today, the rest of the story of Joseph, rest relationships and healing. I'm so thankful we can find healing when we rest in Christ, aren't you? We're glad you're with us for our study today, and welcome to the team. I feel like I'm on a healing journey myself as we look at this topic, learning not only to rest in Christ, but to let His rest, His presence rest on us too. We also have, in addition to our team of five here in the studio, we have some joining us remotely. And Shana, it's good to see you as part of our team today. Addison, good to see you, part of our team. We're glad you're with us. And Puya, we're glad you're with us too as part of our team. And uh, it's great to expand a little, even though we've still got restrictions here in the studio. We're always happy to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School family. It's not just a few of us studying. We've got Hope Sabbath School members in over 200 countries around the world. So when you write to us, it helps us to see how God is working. Here's a note from Ricardo in the United Kingdom. That's my home country. And Ricardo writes and says, Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I already Amen. want to meet him. <laughs> I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for a while, and you're doing a great job. I'm living in the UK, watching Hope Sabbath School with my daughter. My daughter's name is Yemi, and she's only five years old. Aww. Now, we've been talking about training up a child in the way she should go, right? The blessing of, of helping our children to know the love of God. God bless you, Ricardo, for that. May God continue to bless the person who puts the scripture songs together. <laughs> and I say amen because amen. that's the lady I live with, <laughs> my wife who composes the scripture songs. We will thank her later. Here is a note from Slessor is a Kenyan working in Somalia for ADRA. Billy, oh, wow. Slesser, would you give a wave? Because I know you're part of the Adventist Development and Relief <laughs> Agency, ADRA, Somalia. My name is Slesser from Kenya. I've just started watching Hope Sabbath School. Seriously. <laughs> Before it was just on and off. But, but now I'm really watching and uplifted. I was again thinking of the Bible study. I thought of Hope Sabbath School. May mm -hmm. God bless you abundantly. Well, you know, Slessa, you have an important ministry, development and relief working with Adra. God bless you in your work. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Well, here's another of those uh, handwritten notes. <laughs> we get those every once in a while, don't we? Mm -hmm. This is from a donor in Georgia in the United States of America. Hello, Hope Sabbath School family. Hello. Hello. Got a wave. Hmm. I call you my family because I watch Hope Sabbath School every morning at 6 a.m. Wow. That must be our daily hope program every morning. I thank you all for the love of Christ and for teaching me how to hold firmly to Him. Yes. My husband of 30 years just passed away. We used to study the Bible together every day. You helped us. So she and her husband watched together. You helped us lean on God every day. Amen. As my husband has rested in Jesus, I'm still up at 6 a.m. watching Hope Sabbath School. Amen. I sometimes feel that I'm there answering the questions that you ask. <laughs> this is a very holy time for me. To listen to you every morning helps me. I learn to hold firmly to the Spirit and to the rock, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes. What a testimony. I have to learn from Hope Sabbath School to stand strong and to depend on God. We are all His children. Mm. From where I am, blessings to all of you. Enclosed is a small donation to help where needed and a gift of $200 to help Hope Sabbath Amen. School. Yes. Amen. Well, I can, only, I can only imagine that's a gift of love Amen. from a widow in Georgia. Amen. God bless you and thank you for being part of our family. Well, here's another note from Georgia. This one's from Jean. I'm a Hope Sabbath School member. Thanks for sharing Jesus and helping me to better understand the Bible. 
Hope Sabbath School is a blessing. May God continue to bless the team and stay safe. Well, Gene, thanks for writing to us from Georgia. And we, we're so thankful. It's our prayer that we'd share Jesus, right? Yes. Whatever the topic, yes. we would share Jesus and the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. One last note from, oh, I should have asked someone who speaks Portuguese. Josian in Brazil. Josian. I'm from Brazil, and my English isn't my, my English isn't my first language. I hope you can understand me. I just want to say thank you for your amazing class each week. I went to the U.S. for the first time in 2016, and since then I have been watching Hope Sabbath School <laughs> to improve my English and to study the Word of God. Amen. I appreciate every episode. Sometimes, if possible, I watch the same program two or three times a week. <laughs> yes. Now I can understand almost 100% of what you're saying. It's so exciting. I love your insights, testimonies, and the biblical songs, and the Christ-centered approach to your study. Amen. God bless you and keep up the good work. Stay grounded in Jesus, the champion of love. <laughs> well, Josiane, thanks for writing to us from Brazil. We are touched when we hear how many lives are being blessed around the world. We want to thank you for being part of our family. We have a special gift for you, but before I tell you about the gift, I want to invite you to sing our song. It's taken from Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, Jesus says, and find rest for your soul.
If you enjoyed that song, we would like to send a copy to you along with 11 other scripture songs from our Hope Sabbath School series. All you have to do is go to our website. It's our special gift to you during this series on Rest in Christ. Go to hopetv.org slash hopess. Click on the Get Free Gift button. We thought we'd make it simple. Get Free Gift. When you push the button, you'll get a link. Get this theme song plus 11 more scripture songs to hide God's word in your heart. May you be blessed by that gift from Hope Sabbath School. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we do, we love your word because it tells us about you. You love us with an immeasurable and unfailing love. And we just want to say thank you for your mercy and grace to us. Today, as we talk about rest, relationships, and healing, some may experience pain as we think about hurt that's happened in this broken world. But thank you for your promise that you'll never leave us or forsake us and that you will bring just the healing that you know we need. Guide us, I pray, by the Holy Spirit in our study today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, in our previous study, Stephanie led us in a, a, a challenging, a challenging study about dysfunction. We see it in Bible families. It's not masked over. We live in a broken world, and maybe some of us, we, we watched and we said, that, that looks like my family, or, or I felt some of that pain. Mm. Today we're going to continue on because we've discovered <laughs> that God has a good plan. Yes. He wants to bring healing, to break those generational dysfunctions, and to give us a new life and rest in Christ. So let me ask someone to summarize. Jason, maybe you could do a quick summary. We're about to see a prisoner named Joseph sent to the court of Pharaoh to interpret a dream. How did he end up there and and how has he made it past all of that family dysfunction? Sure. So Joseph comes from a family with a lot of dysfunction. His father Jacob has a lot of children. He's a patriarch in Israel and uh, Joseph realizes early on through dreams that God has a calling for him, but he's not always quite sure how to share it. And uh, he causes, uh, there's some jealousy that happens. And through that jealousy, his brothers actually take him and sell him into slavery. He goes to Egypt. While he's in Egypt, uh, before he goes, he makes the decision to trust God while in Egypt. God blesses him. Things look like they're going well for him in the house of Potiphar, chief of the king's guard. But then a situation comes up where Potiphar's wife uh, falsely accuses him because he won't agree to her advances sexually. And uh, she makes these accusations. Potiphar, it seems clear, doesn't believe them, but he has to do something to save face. So he puts Joseph in prison, but Joseph is in prison. God still blesses him there in prison. And while he's in prison, he even gets to uh, interact with some of Pharaoh's servants, interprets dreams for them. And one of those servants, though he first forgets Jake, Joseph, later remembers him when Pharaoh has a dream. And, Fer- and then uh, Joseph is called in to uh, interpret Pharaoh's dream. Now, thank you for that brief summary. Can you imagine going in to the court of Pharaoh? Mm. You've been through so much hardship. What would the first thing what would what would the first thing be off of your lips? You say, "How come you treated me so unfairly?" Or maybe look for Potiphar. You know, <laughs> though we know Potiphar would have killed him if he'd believed the accusation, right? Yeah. Mm. But let's listen, Stephanie, to the words of this young man. He's now how old? He was seventeen when he was sold, right? Mm-hmm. How old is he now? Thirty. So he's about the age when Jesus began his ministry. Mm-hmm. Anybody here about 30 years old? Yes, about 30 years old. So he's a young adult. Mm-hmm. And it seems like half of his life has been a terrible mess. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's, let's listen to the words that come out of his mouth in Genesis 41, verse 16. Stephanie? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. What do we learn, Haiti, even right there? It's not me. He's been brought in like the super dream interpreter. Mm-hmm. Mm. And what, what do we learn about Joseph's character just from these few words? Right there that he recognizes his place. 
mm -hmm. in relation to God. Mm -hmm. And he gives glory to God. Not only does he glorify him in his own life, but he points others to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He points a yes. global leader, right, yeah. to the Pharaoh. Yes, yeah. Daisy. He's not taking credit. He's given the credit to who, uh, God, who was due that credit. Mm -hmm. We'll hear that later, Shana. Uh, while, while you're commenting, think as a group. Someone later will deflect all of the glory. Don't give me the answer just yet. Mm -hmm. But also the ability to interpret dreams. He says, it's not me, it's God. Mm -hmm. Shana? Joseph's also displaying a great sense of humility. Um, he'd been blessed with this gift to interpret dreams, and he could have put it, uh, had it that, you know, yes, I can interpret dreams, but he's so humble about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, he could have back to something we said in a previous study, said, I've got to exploit this to the full, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But he comes with a humble attitude, very clear who's number one in his life. The Lord is number one in his life and he comes to interpret the dream. Billy, let's take a look. Oh, I was gonna ask you another one who deflected the honor and gave it all to God. Who was that? Daniel, yeah. Daniel right. Daniel. He says, there's a God in heaven yeah. Yeah. who can interpret the dream for you. Yeah. But mm -hmm. take us in the same chapter of Genesis 41 and read the counsel that this young man, Joseph, gives to the Pharaoh, verses 33 to 36. The dream, remember, is talking about seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine, but it's, it's in picture form, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Let's see the counsel that Joseph gives. Sure, and I'll be reading from the NIV. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fit of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. Mm. That's good common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, may not surprise us that, that he would give that interpretation. What should surprise us is the verses that follow, mm -hmm. uh, Daisy. If you could read them for us, verses 37 to 44. I've heard this story and I go, oh yes, and then Joseph was... But this fellow's just been brought out of a dungeon. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. And he's giving all of the glory to God. He's told about mm -hmm. what they should do to prepare for this famine. Yep. But let's listen to the Pharaoh's reaction in Genesis 41, verses 37 to 44. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on the throne, will have a rank higher than yours. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Huh. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in fine linen clothing and hanged a gold chain around his neck. Then he set, Then he had Joseph ride in the chariot reserved for his second in command. And wherever Joseph went, the command was shouted, kneel down. So Pharaoh put, so Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. Mm. Puya, what do you think uh, he was thinking? I mean, was Joseph expecting this kind of reaction from the Pharaoh when the dream was interpreted? I don't think so. I'm, I'm sure that Joseph was so surprised. This doesn't make sense mm -hmm. from a human's perspective. There can there can only be there can be only one answer. That is, God must be involved here. All right, Billy. Uh, it, what would what would have been a, a desirable outcome for Joseph if he, if he was just thinking about his plan for his life? 
Yeah, Joseph would have been like, well, I'm expecting Pharaoh to pardon my sentence and make That me would be wonderful, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe I could hitchhike on a camel back to <laughs> to my homeland. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. just uh, don't keep me in that dungeon. Yeah. Um, a shocking response. Stephanie, it seems almost bizarre <laughs> that yeah. the Pharaoh meeting someone for just a few minutes would make him second in command. Mm. Uh, is it? Is that normal? Is there something supernatural going on here? It's not, but that he had already been promoted in two other places where it, it really didn't make sense that he would be, have been given everything. So this was a repeat of what happened in Potiphar's house, of what happened in, in, um, in the dungeon. And it's interesting to me, the other thing that was interesting to me was that his response was, can you find such a man mm -hmm. who has the spirit of God? Mm -hmm. He was reflect, um, mm -hmm. you know, reflecting to God as well, you know, as as God has shown you. And this is a knew. pagan monarch mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. who's seeing something in this young man. Haiti? I think that in addition to something absolutely supernatural happening, I wonder if um, the Pharaoh has heard of him mm -hmm. from his official Potiphar, and from mm. the captain of his guard. Right. If they've talked about him, you know, and he's like, mm. when he meets him, then there's something about him also when he, his presence, when he gets to meet him face to face. Right. That in addition to all that, God uses to put him in this position. You know, I was thinking um, yes. about that same thing and, and wondering if the Pharaoh hadn't said to his captain of the guard, why did you kill that servant? I heard that terrible rumor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There may have been more going on that God mm -hmm. brought to the attention of the Pharaoh. We don't know. We don't know. But the Spirit of God was recognized in him. Daisy? Yeah. It's amazing. Just listen. So I'm glad you brought up that point because I never, ever made that connection. But something was going on. God was preparing a foundation to pair uh, Potiphar, I mean, no, Pharaoh, to believe Joseph when he spoke to um interpreted the dream. I don't want us to forget about the significance of that dream because it was nobody else could interpret it. Right. Which, so it's like for Joseph to be able to give meaning to that dream, which was going to affect the entire nation and even those around, that was remarkable. So of course he says, no one, I can't entrust this with no, anybody else but you because clearly God is with you and you're the only person who would know how to handle this prophecy that's about to happen. Mm -hmm. So Shane, I want to ask you a question. Uh, Billy says Joseph would have probably been happier to just have been set free from the prison, but he's second in command and he's put in the Pharaoh's chariot and the call goes out, bow the knee, mm -hmm. bow the knee. Mm -hmm. What do you think went through his mind <laughs> as he heard them shouting, kneel down, kneel down. Mm. Shana? There, there must have been some apprehension towards people giving him glory because as was highlighted before, this is a man of humility, a man who, who is adamant about giving God the glory. Like, don't give me the glory, mm. give it all to God. So he must have been taken aback somewhat. In every situation, even when we're fully surrendered to the Lord, there will always be a temptation. Mm -hmm. to take the glory to ourselves, right? But Stephanie, I, I saw your face reacting. Bow the knee, bow the knee. What do you think was going through his mind? In addition to stay humble, Joseph, stay connected with the Lord. He, I don't know. I, if I was in that position, I would have thought, this must be a dream. Oh, yeah, I had that dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About people bowing down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now you say, well, that doesn't count because it wasn't his brother's. We're not done with the story right. yeah. because the story is going to unfold and Joseph is going to face another great test. Mm -hmm. Anybody? What's the next great test mm. that he'll face? It's not whether he'll yield to the uh, sexual harassment of part of his wife day after day. What's the new test, Billy? Resentment. Yes. Will he let go of all of the resentment, has he let go of all of the resentment mm -hmm. yeah. towards his brothers? Well, let's see how the story unfolds. Genesis chapter 42, verses 1 through 6. Jason, if you could read that. What event brings him face to face with 
with his siblings who were the ones who sold him into slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the New King James Version here, Genesis chapter 42, verses 1 through 6. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, lest some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Mm. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Mm. So what's going through Joseph's mind? Anyone? <laughs> what's going through Joseph's mind as he sees his brothers? Does he recognize them? Yes. 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 Do they recognize him? No. no. Uh, yes. Uh, Addison, what, what's going through? We don't know for sure, but what do you think's going through his mind as he sees his brothers bowing down? What I, what I picture is happening is you know, he sees them coming to him and, you know, he recognizes them from a distance. This is what I picture. And then they bow themselves before him. And that's probably the moment where it dawns on him. The, the dream, the dream that he had at the age of 17 flashes back into his mind. It's like, wow, no, this is, this is a, a reality. They are actually bowing down to me. Um, All right, Puya, so your hand raised. Anything else besides this is the... This is the fulfillment of a prophecy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. given more than a decade earlier. Mm -hmm. Puya? Uh, in our previous study, we asked the question of why God didn't save Joseph while he was in prison. And I'm thinking that as Joseph is now finally in this position of being like the prime minister of Egypt and now seeing people bowing down, bowing down before him and including his brothers, I think, I, I believe Joseph would be making the mental uh, connection, like seeing now the bigger picture. Oh, now I see how God has been guiding me to this point. And all those things that I went through are finally making sense. God has been preparing me to save and help my family. Now, if you read the story, and, and by the way, a good portion of the Bible, because Genesis is a large book in the Bible, it's like a whole, one of the whole epistles of the New Testament just on this one man, Joseph, <laughs> several mm -hmm. chapters. It's an important story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, here he is, his brothers have come to him. Some people say, why does he act the way that he does? It, it, is he trying to cause them anguish? You know, some of the things he does, right? Like putting, yeah. first of all, <laughs> accusing them of being spies and, right and then putting the money back in, and, and later he'll even put his silver cup in Benjamin's sack. Mm -hmm. You know the whole story. Yeah. Is, is he, a, is there an expression passive aggressive, you know? Mm -hmm. He's just trying to make them suffer, or is there something deeper that's going on here? What do you think, Daisy? I think he was testing them to see how they were, because he knew how they were, what, more than 10 years ago. He knew the kind of people they were. So he wanted to see if they had changed based on how they treated him, if they were still, if they still remember what they did and if they've repented of that action that they did towards their brother. Anybody was, want to agree or disagree? Billy? Yeah, I feel like, you know, he was catching up with his feelings. Everything was happening so fast. So you think he's actually kind of processing all of this? Yeah, and he's basically going into, I don't know, maybe pilot mode, uh, autopilot mode. Mm. But uh, the other thing too is that he's, um, Maybe mentally he has forgiven them, but when he sees them, like he was trying to, I guess, catch up with that feeling. Is it possible, for example, we talk about dysfunction, that you've been in a family where you've been abused, maybe by a relative, you forgive them, but then when you step, they step back into your presence? You don't forget. 
You remember what they did. Daisy, <laughs> you're saying even though you may have forgiven, there's, are there still emotions, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, thoughts, yes. memories? Mm -hmm. yeah. You still remember what people did to you. Yes, you can forgive, but it's really hard to forget. I think that's where people have a hard time trying to draw the line as to what to do when you meet that person that used to abuse mm -hmm. you. The fact that you still remember does not necessarily mean that you haven't forgiven them. It's just learning how to control your emotions and channel it in the right direction so that whatever happened is not controlling your life now. It's, it's a thing, you're making it a thing of the past. All right, Stephanie? And I think what Billy was saying too, it, it makes sense that it's a process, right? Mm. Forgiveness is a process. So you may have forgiven someone, but when it pops up again and it's a different angle. Mm -hmm. You're having to forgive again. You realize that there's things that you haven't forgiven. You didn't know they were deep-seated pain, yeah. painful mm -hmm. situations in your life. Yeah. And you have to intentionally forgive that specific thing. Yeah. All right, um, Addison, to come to your point, and then we're gonna overhear a conversation between the brothers that tells us something about where they've been in the past decade plus. Mm -hmm. Uh, have they processed all of this unhealthy behavior? Addison? This may be the biggest um, obstacle that Joseph had to face. Mm -hmm. Among all the things that he's been through, mm -hmm. this one, because it's dealing with relationships, this is going to be the biggest test of his character. Wow. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a powerful story as we're gonna see more of it soon. Thank you for sharing that because mm -hmm. some people would have immediately said, well, the thing with Potiphar's wife, that was the biggest challenge or, mm -hmm. but, but let's read, let's overhear the conversation. Uh, Billy, if you could read for us from Genesis 42, verses 21 through 23. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's see what we, we learn sure. from the brothers. And I'll be reading from the NIV. They said to one another, Surely we have punished, we are, we are being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us for his life, but we would not listen. Hmm. That's why this distress has come on us. Reuben replied, did I tell you not to sin against this boy? But you would, wouldn't listen. Now we must give an account for his blood. They did not realize that Joseph could understand them since he was using an hmm. interpreter. Mm. What, what dynamic is going on? And then Shana, I'm going to ask you to read the next <laughs> verse and we'll see Joseph's reaction. What's the dynamic here, Haiti? Something that happens in a lot of families, bickering and blaming, pointing fingers. Mm. You see, this is your fault. <laughs> I told you mm. we shouldn't have done that. And um, guilt, a feeling yeah. like yeah. now we're being punished. We're getting what we deserve. As, as if somehow this unknown person in Egypt was, right. was punishing them for something they done. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a healthy guilt, is it? Right. But they're feeling the burden. Right. They've never dealt with, with their sin. Yes, yeah. It's amazing to me because it's been over a decade and they still remember what they did. That means it's been haunting them ever since they did yes. it. Sure. So people who abuse people don't also live a peaceful life because That's whatever right. they do hunts them until they also mm -hmm. deal with the issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Troubles yes. them, doesn't it? Shana, could you read the next verse for us in Genesis 42 verse 24? We get a picture of, um, of the internal reaction now and it kind of spills out literally mm -hmm. of, of Joseph when he hears his brothers. Shane of um, Genesis 42 verse 24. Sure and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And he turned himself about from them and wept and returned to them again and communed with them and took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. Now we weep for a lot of different reasons. Mm. What what do you what what do you see behind those tears? Maybe many things, right? Yeah. Uh, Daisy, what do you see? I think it was a combination of pain and joy. Yes. Mm. Because in the past he was crying tears of pain because what he was going through was really painful. At this point he's remembering the pain, but I think the joy, the tears of joy was a lot more. Because finally, after all these years of crying over what his brothers did to him, he's able to deal with the issue and make peace mm. with them. Anybody else? Joy uh, or, or pain or both? 
Um, I see uh, Addison and Puya's hands. Yeah, Daisy brought up a really good point. Um, it's this amalgamation of emotions. It's it's this unusual experience. You know, usually you fall in one cap, either one or the other. But no, here he's he's thinking about the past, and sure he's he's sad about that. But even more so, he's got pity uh, for his uh, for his brothers and what they're experiencing. That guilt that they've been living with for many years, and then in his mind, I picture that he's got a certain level of optimism, a bit of hope that like. Perhaps they have changed. Yeah. Mm. All right, he's going to put, the, some, put them to some tests mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. out if they've changed. Uh, Puya, these tears, they're flowing freely. W w mm -hmm. We don't have a description. It doesn't say he wept because, but, but what do you right. think? Uh, as, as you have mentioned, I think it's a combination of many things. And now I can't help but remember my experience as a young boy um, when my father sent me to go to school in India, I, I was in a boarding school uh, where it was very difficult because I was a foreigner and I was um, I was bullied uh, with difficult, painful words where I was told uh, many um, painful words that I had to go through. And uh, it's interesting that 10 years later, I was invited uh, to minister, to, to preach once again to this place in India. Um, and a decade later, when I went back to my school and I went back to the classroom where I spent uh, every day to read my Bible and pray, I just cried. I just cried because it, it was a mixture of everything. And as we're reading through the story of Joseph, like I, I also believe that as you look back over the past decade of what he had been through and how God had now bring him to this place where he was going to be a blessing or where he could help uh, his brothers. I'm sure that he was happy in the end. Yeah. Well, we're going to see some more tears now <laughs> in chapter 45, because having put them to, to a variety of tests and even having them go get their brother Benjamin, uh, we pick up the story. Mm -hmm. Jason, if you could read for us the first three verses of Genesis 45, verses 1 to 3. I have the New King James Version here. Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 3. Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were mm. dismayed <laughs> in his presence. Mm. Oh, would someone like to unpack that part of the story? Mm. <laughs> um, have you ever heard someone weep so loudly mm. that they could be heard in another building? I remember a funeral uh, for a mother who lost a baby. Mm. I still hear the, the intensity of that weeping. It's never easy to say goodbye to someone you love, mm. but this was just a little one. I remember that wail. Mm. Uh, what, what, what do you, what's happening for Joseph here? Mm. Is it bad? Is it good? What is it? Help me, someone. Yes, Billy. I think he's finally surrendering and being himself. He was holding so yes. much back. Mm -hmm. He was holding mm -hmm. everything back. And that can explain why he was, you know, forgiving the brothers, but at the same time going back. And that can explain why he was act act acting out of emotion. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's yeah. like a, something broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. a dam. Yeah, yeah, dam was broken. That's mm -hmm. right. Like the... <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and yet, uh, yeah, what does that tell you about Joseph? You know, we're talking mm -hmm. about surviving. We all have yeah. some area of dysfunction, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Whether it's in our family or in relationships with friends. We've, we live in a damaged planet. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, what, does, what does this interaction, we're talking about Joseph right now. We're going to talk about his brothers. But what does that tell you 
Uh, what, what lesson can you learn from what's mm -hmm. happening for Joseph right now? Daisy? I'm trying to imagine what he's going through. It's difficult to hold those emotions all these years, you know. I'm sure he really loved his brothers back then, even when they did those things to him. So it really hurts that the people that you love do terrible things to you and you still want to love them. So him coming to this point where he had the power to punish them, you know. To kill them. To kill them. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was still seeking to reconcile with them. Mm -hmm. And then the possibility of that happening became more of a reality because before he was separated from them. He never thought he would see them again. But this became a reality and he was so joyful. It's just a mixture of emotions I can't even explain. <laughs> sure. It's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think catharsis is a mm -hmm. word, isn't it? There's some healing in allowing that weeping. Yes. yes. He doesn't say to himself, I will weep so loudly that the Pharaoh will hear it. No. Mm -hmm. he, he cannot contain uh, that, that emotion. emotion. Addison. Mm. This is such an emotionally charged passage, but it's, yes. it's so positive. There's, there's tears of joy. He shows this compassion for his brothers that reminds me wholly and completely of our Savior, Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. for each one of us and the joy of when one sinner repents you know Joseph saw the fruits of true repentance mm -hmm. and he rejoiced mm -hmm. but he cried those were tears of joy and Jesus does the same thing when we come back to the fold what does the last part of verse 3 tell us about the reaction of the brothers what, what do we learn not not the reaction but their internal state uh, Jason <laughs> Well, it says they were dismayed, so they're scared here. They're sad. They're, this is not a positive experience at this moment for them emotionally. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, Jason. And Joseph picks up on those nonverbal cues, their anxiety. Yes. Stephanie, let's see. I think, again, motivated by that love, Daisy, you were talking about. He's wanting to reach out to his brothers in Genesis 45, verses 4 through 15. Mm -hmm. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Hmm. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth, to save your lives by a great deliverance. Mm -hmm. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hurry, go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, for there is still five years of famine. And behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Mm -hmm. Mm. That has to be one of the most powerful passages, not just about family healing, but yeah. about a, a, a picture of the gospel, yeah. mm. of, of what yes. Jesus will do for us. Obviously, mm -hmm. Joseph is not the Messiah, but he is 
doing a saving work under the direction of God, yes. right? Yes. Um, what moves you about this story, Shana? Um, <laughs> you just hear this. Uh, he falls on Benjamin's neck and weeps, and then he we hugs his brothers and weeps. What, mm. what, what impacts you as you hear this story about Joseph? It's such an emotional, and, and it, it just really encompasses what true forgiveness looks like. It, it may have been painful. Well, it was painful for Joseph, but it was beautiful in the end when he just showed love, the ultimate love to his brothers that, you know, he, he went around to all of them and greeted them with a kiss. And it kind of reminds me of, of Jesus and, and how, you know, God sent him here to uh, show us how to do it. And then he went to prepare a place for us because, you know, in the end, that's where Joseph's family end up, ended up. And it was because of Joseph. Joseph had it prepared for them. So um, it's just a really emotional, and beautiful ending to the story. Now, somebody said, I think, Stephanie, you said that this whole forgiveness and healing is a journey. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like it, it isn't just a one-time event. Yeah. Daisy? I believe forgiveness is a daily choice. You know, you don't forgive one person, I mean, one time and then it's done. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly keep reminding yourself that you're forgiven. And I mean, you have to constantly choose to forgive that person because you don't forget what they did. And sometimes the impact of whatever they did to you, you're still living it. You're still mm -hmm. experiencing it on a daily level, possibly. So it's a choice, a daily, a moment-by-moment -moment choice to forgive. Um, I'm wrestling with that because I think forgiveness can have a, a specific a point. Right. Like Jesus said, Father, forgive them, and He yes. did forgive them. Mm -hmm. But the journey of healing, right. maybe that would be a way of describing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's just not, oh, it's total. You know, you've been wounded. It takes time, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Sure. We it's see that with the brothers. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not just in the word of that passage, but in a comment that Joseph makes. And Haiti, if you could read it for us in uh, verse 24 of Genesis 45, what, what clue is there that Joseph still sees mm. that, that, that it is that journey mm -hmm. of healing? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. So he sent his brothers away and they departed. And he said to them, see that you do not become troubled along the way. And I was reading this yesterday in my <laughs> New International Version and it said, do not quarrel along the way. Okay. And I like that version a little more. You like the quarrel better? <laughs> Maybe they're both good. Mm -hmm. uh, what might they quarrel about? Mm -hmm. Let's take that translation. What might they quarrel about? They've just been forgiven by their brother that they sold into slavery. What might they quarrel about oh on the way home? I'm, they now have to go to their father and tell them that exactly. they sold their brother, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he wasn't dead all these years, that they lied to him all these years and they have mm -hmm. to face his wrath. Yeah. Well, that's what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they're quarreling about that and maybe about go going back in time and trying to bring up, you know, oh, well, you know, you should have listened to me. No, you should have listened to me. I told you not to do it. Mm -hmm. I think that they're, they're mm -hmm. just going through all the, those emotions. All right, Puya, I saw your hand raised. In addition to the possible translation, don't quarrel along mm -hmm. the way, yeah. Possibly don't be yeah. troubled. What, what, what do you think Joseph was thinking about and trying to give them some uh, reassurance? Mm. I believe uh, it probably would be difficult for the brothers to experience that forgiveness at first too. Remembering what they did to Joseph, I believe that they might struggle to accept the forgiveness that Joseph had offered to them. Mm. You know, it often is the case with... Um, us too. Sometimes uh, the enemy wants us to doubt of how much God loves us, mm -hmm. that we trouble ourselves again and again. Mm. I think you're right. And in fact, if you read in Genesis uh, 50, even after Joseph died, after Jacob dies, mm -hmm. the brothers are worried yes. mm -hmm. that Joseph will, will take vengeance on them. Mm -hmm. So, so they're they're slow, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Joseph is reassuring them. Well, we wish every story could, 
could end perfectly, but there is something beautiful. Stephanie, if you could take us to Genesis chapter 45 and read verses 25 through 28. This is the reunion of Joseph and his father. I gave you another difficult <laughs> passage to read earlier. Should I pass it to someone else? It's okay. Uh, you know, I just want to say, and I want to say this to our Hope Sabbath School family, we ought to read the scripture like it really matters. Mm -hmm. And when you were reading earlier, I had tears in my eyes because I felt that you were experiencing that love that Joseph was yeah. experiencing in his heart. So should I apologize that it's I asked you to read again <laughs> Genesis 45, now the reunion between mm. Joseph and his father. And mm. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to Jacob their father. And they told him saying, Joseph is still alive and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart stood still, because he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words with which Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Mm. Then Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Mm. And Shana, I'm going to ask you to pick up the story, if you would, in chapter 46, verses 1 through 6. Sure, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father, Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. Mm. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Egypt, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him. And then read verse 29 of the same chapter for us, Shana. And, and Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Mm -hmm. Anyone have another translation besides a good while? He mm -hmm. wept. A long time. A long time. Mm -hmm. Now, not all stories have such a happy ending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one, right. brothers forgiven, father and a son he thought was dead, alive again, embracing mm -hmm. him. So what would you say to someone watching Hope Sabbath School who's still on that journey longing for healing of relationships, longing, for, longing to be made whole, to find that rest in Christ even in the relationships they have? What would you say? Daisy? tough one but um like you said you've read the whole bible and god wins in the end so we just have to hold on and trust that god always makes beauty out of ashes you know no matter how horrible and not to belittle any horrible experience that a person is going through but the worst of experiences can have a beautiful ending and if it's even if it's not in this life when god when jesus comes again it will be made Perfect. And I, I like the expression, hold on, not just hold on to yourself or hold on to an idea, but hold on to the hand of yes. God, mm -hmm. to Jesus who mm -hmm. loves you with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Um, mm -hmm. Buya, what would you say? You, you see people who, who are in broken relationships um, and they're still longing for that kind of beautiful ending that, mm -hmm. that, that we saw with Joseph and his family. 
Right. I, I've heard some people say that people who are hurt hurt other people,、mm. and so、uh, we need to find healing. And I believe Joseph found his healing through the love of God. And so I would say to people who are going through、um, emotional and relationship problems to look at the cross, to look at the love of God, and find healing. And only in light of the cross can we、uh, forgive others too. And you know, it may be true that we may never find a healing with a, an earthly relationship,、mm -hmm. because that takes two two sides, right?、Mm -hmm. yeah. But but we can find that healing in the love of God. Anybody else? What would you say? What what's what's the lesson you you learn out of this story, Haiti? In addition to just like clinging on to the feet of Jesus and the throne of God, I would say you need to also be willing to do your own part to mend a relationship. You can't only put that on the other person. You also might need to go and、uh, ask forgiveness, or just bring the topic up. Maybe you were the one that was hurt. In order for complete healing to come, you might need to just go and 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 bring it up so that it's addressed and you're able to move. That、on. takes courage.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's what Joseph did.、Right. He was willing to say, "I am your brother,"、mm -hmm. <laughs> even though he would weep. So loudly, the Pharaoh would hear.、Yeah. He was willing to extend. No guarantee how they would respond,、right. no. but praying God be at work even、yeah. in this moment.、Yeah. Oh, my friends, someone, someone watching Hope Sabbath School today, you have a tear running down your cheeks. You're saying, God, could you heal my relationships?、Yeah. Well, we're hearing that it begins by letting that relationship with God be strong. Letting His love pour in, let His healing blessing rest upon you, because that's what's needed to let the blessing flow to those who are willing to receive the healing blessing as well. That's my prayer for you. It's my prayer for my own heart. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you that we can find rest in Christ, even in relationships where we've been hurt. That healing can come. May we rest in Your love, and may the healing blessing not be contained, but bless those who are willing to receive it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Don't forget that gift, get free gift on our website. May God bless you. May His healing blessing flow through you to those around you.